forces. Estimates are that hundreds of thousands of Oromians have been uprooted from their homes and forced to flee the persecution and the violence. And there's no doubt that Ethiopia is a very important U.S. ally, but that does not mean that we should turn a blind eye as it oppresses its people. Now, in my state of Minnesota, we are home to the largest community of Oromians outside of Ethiopia. They're valued members of our community, and we're very fortunate to have them. I joined many Ethiopians and Oromians actually this past Sunday night when I attended a very large and moving interfaith rally with members of the African and Jewish community, and they were all together reaffirming their commitment to religious freedom, to diversity, and to justice. And sadly, many Oromians today won't find these ideals in their home country of Ethiopia. So, Mr. Speaker, today the House can speak with a solid, strong voice to support human rights and also condemn the killing of innocent protesters and the arrest and detention of journalists and students and political leaders. And we're also at the same time urging through this resolution that the protesters also refrain from violence and also urge the Ethiopian government to take very concrete, concrete steps to end its persecution and oppressive conduct. So today we have an opportunity to take these important steps in showing our solidarity with the Oromians, and I hope my colleagues will join in support of this resolution. Now yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from New Jersey reserves. Gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Ellison, who is an original co-sponsor of this legislation. Gentleman from Minnesota is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. I also thank Chairman Smith uh, and ranking member uh, for uh, standing together uh, on this important House Resolution 128. It is true that Minnesota is home to a large number of people who find their roots in Ethiopia and uh, are of the Oromo background. These uh, Minnesotans have made it very clear by reaching out to their elected representatives that while their feet are firmly planted on American soil, they still, like so many other Americans, have a heart and a sentiment where they want to support justice in the homeland that they, that they uh, came from. And as a result, I've been able to get an education from my constituents about circumstances in Ethiopia which make this resolution necessary. So I do rise in support of House Resolution 128, which calls on the government of Ethiopia to make clear, concrete steps toward becoming an inclusive, more democratic, more respectful of human rights of all of its citizens. I'd like to note that this is a bipartisan resolution, proving that we can come together for critical issues like human rights in Ethiopia for Americans who find their roots in Ethiopia and for people all over the world. In Minnesota, as I noted, we are fortunate to be home to one of the largest Oromo and Ogaden communities in North America. And it is because of the relentless work of these folks that these issues have come to light. I thank them. Many of them here are here today, and, I, and they have been working on this issue for many years, Mr. Speaker, because it is that vitally important. Now, as my uh, colleagues have noted, Ethiopia is an important ally of the United States. That's a fact. But even allies must be held accountable when they violate the human rights of their people. Status as an ally is not a license to abuse human rights. The Ethiopian people desperately need their government to take action to secure their human rights and expand inclusive democracy. Additional two minutes. The gentleman is recognized for an additional two minutes. The Ethiopian government continues to detain journalists, bloggers, students, political opposition leaders. Thousands remain in prison to this day. In addition, the Ethiopian government admits to killing over 500 of its citizens during the protests in an effort to suppress the people's freedom of speech. Most observers put this number far higher. These abuses have created a serious instability in the country. And while there have been some signs of progress, which must be noted, including the recent election of Prime Minister from the Ogaden Re Oromo region, we must continue to push for real, concrete changes. For example, the government should let the UN High Commissioner of Human Rights travel through the country to conduct an independent assessment of human rights situation in the country. By passing this resolution, Congress will be making clear that we will not remain silent on this important issue. We will stand together 
across the political divide on in support of these human rights in Ethiopia. By passing this resolution, we will speed up de democratic change in Ethiopia. I urge all of my colleagues to vote yes on this important resolution. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Massachusetts reserves. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, we reserve as well. The gentleman from New Jersey reserves. The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, use, I yield myself as much time as I may consume for the purpose of closing. Uh, I'll note that Chairman Royce uh, has been a big factor in moving this forward. And, I, and when I give thanks to Mr. Smith and over 100 more colleagues, I want to make sure uh, that Chairman Royce is uh, a person that's highlighted for his great efforts. We're going to miss him as he's decided not to seek re-election. Uh, he's been a, uh, a person that has shown great ability to be a bipartisan leader in the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I've enjoyed working with him on this issue and many other issues. Speaker, this resolution seeks to support Ethiopia's political transition as it hopefully moves beyond a state of emergency towards greater civil liberties under a new prime minister. This resolution also supports the Ethiopians' people's, their aspirations to live in a more democratic system in which government respects fundamental freedoms. We have partnered with Ethiopia on so many important issues, issues important to their own security, their own health, their own global welfare, and we also recognize the value in that partnership in dealing with the security issues and the ideals and values that the United States has as a country. This resolution strongly urges them to take that other step, to expand that partnership beyond those issues into a partnership of democracy, where there will be rule of law, freedom of the press, where opposition people will not be endangered in terms of their safety, will not be imprisoned. So I strongly support HRES 128. I urge my colleagues uh, to go forward, uh, and I uh, yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself <clears throat> such time as I can soon to close. I'd, I'd just call the attention to the membership, a, an excellent letter uh, written by human rights groups, the diaspora, uh, one, two, three, four, six groups at all, and I will put it into the record, but it's Ethiopia Joint Letter about H, uh, House Resolution 128 in support of it. They make a number of very important points. For the past three years, they point out, as we know, Ethiopia has faced largely peaceful and sustained protesters in the Oromia and Amhara regions of the country. They were led by youth seeking opportunity, political reform, and more participatory development strategies. The government responded with excessive force. More than 1,000 protesters have been killed by the Ethiopian security forces, a greater number injured, tens of thousands imprisoned, and many more tortured uh, for, uh, for expressing grievances. Over a million um, have been displaced. Let me just say in conclusion that they talk about the importance of supporting this. Yes, there's a new prime minister, but as they point out in their statement, uh, and it's so true, Ethiopia's previous transfer of power indicate that leadership change is often followed by unfulfilled promises, a culling of opponents, and power consolidation. That can't happen again. This resolution, I think, deserves the support of every single member. I yield back the balance of our time. Gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 128 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the resolution is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The chair, the chair will remind all persons in the gallery that they are here as guests of the House and that any manifestation of approval or disapproval of proceedings is in violation of the rules of the House.
For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I, I move the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2219 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 2219, a bill to increase the role of the financial industry in combating human trafficking. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Royce, and the gentleman from Massachusetts, Mr. Keating, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. I'm going to ask, Mr. Speaker, unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and to include any extraneous material on this in the record. Without objection. 